Welcome to the Cold Hard Truth. My name is Redemption Goddess. Today, I want to cover Junior Bridgman. Now, I came across this from a a short on YouTube. This white guy, he covers all things sports, stuff you may not have known about the players, and he does it really quick. So I will link... um, I will link him in the description box because I wouldn't even known this if I wouldn't have watched that short. So I went off on my own and did a little bit more research. Find out that this man, okay, first of all, if you're a guy, you probably know uh, this man, he only averaged like 13 points and only made about 300 grand or so a year. Um, Didn't play very long. On his off season, he worked at Wendy's. And that was the jump start. That was a jump start. He wound up being the largest franchise holder of Wendy's. And then he went on to get 120 Chili's franchises. Now, he sold them all, uh, some to Chauncey Billups. And he's trying to focus on being a Coca-Cola bottler for the Midwest. Now, this is what he's doing now. Now, he married his high school sweetheart, which is a black woman and beautiful children but i'm using this as an example because when i saw the trolls last night i was just like how do they have time to do this right i understand like these reactions you know it's entertaining you're on your break or whatever um but i see like this almost worshiping of, of certain YouTubers. Like uh, you got the Tariq Nasheed team. You got the Kevin Samuels team. You got this team and that team and O'Shea, the Manosphere, the who, the who, the who. And they entertain you. Sometimes they drop you some jewels of information. Uh, uh, the lead attorney, I really like him. He really helps the guys out, uh, with divorce and child support and all of the things that guys go through. There are some malicious women out here. That's the truth. There are some some very malicious women. And I'm glad that these guys have the space to go to. But what I don't see in this space, I, I mean, I just see them like dragging each other down, back and forth, back and forth. And then when the when when there's a woman to pounce on, they'll go and pounce on her, you know. Oh, look at her. Look at her bangs. Look at her hair. Oh, she ugly. Uh, da, da, da. I prefer white women. I like Mexican women. And I'm like, what the holy hell (laughs) then in the same breath of air you need to be submissive submissive to what what am i submitting to poverty (laughs) i'm so you know some of these guys like they they really just they just really uh it is sickening but i love the great examples of black men doing a thing now you see Stephen A. Smith he didn't have his face on this man and I know he played and set what he played 76 to 80 I think so Stephen A. probably didn't have a career back then but I never hear them bring this man up I never even not even his accomplishments I never hear it I listen to sports you know when you get married you got to kind of learn what your husband like you know so I had to learn stuff about sports, but um, I knew a lot about football already. I grew up in a in a football house, so I knew a lot about football. I had to learn basketball and still don't know all of the players. Obviously, I didn't even know about this man. So I wasn't born yet anyway, but the thing about it is, you know, if you're going to do a negative I mean, obviously, you do whatever you want on your channel. But I like the contrast. You don't tell me about Kodak Black and all of these folks. Tell me about the folks that's doing what they're supposed to do. Because when you paint this picture that all people are doing, you know, you start putting folks into these categories and boxing them in. It's good. It's some men out there. That's handling a business. And this is an example. Please go research this man. Um, read some articles about him. See if you can find 
you know, when your local newspaper probably will cover more. I see that St. Louis, they covered him a lot. Um, nationally though, and even in the conversation now, like I would love to hear this man. I would love Kwame Brown to interview this man. It would be awesome to hear an interview from this man. And he kind of breaks down how you can buy for, you know, you can go and find that information. They have whole courses on French, you know, how to buy franchises and stuff. But because, you know, Kwame Brown has an audience of 370, 380 some thousand people with 10 and 15 and 20 some thousand people tuning into lives and the things that he does. And we just kind of assume that that's mainly black, mostly black, but we don't really know. Only he knows behind the scenes what demographic everybody is coming from. But I would love to hear this the humbleness of him going to work during the off season at Wendy's so he can learn the ropes. Folks think that just cause you got a whole bunch of money, you just throw money at this, throw money at that. If you don't know what you're doing, even if you throw money at it, it's not going to work. He went and learned the ins and outs of Wendy's. And then he went and start buying them up. And at one point he had more Wendy's franchises than anybody on the planet. Black man. I never heard Stephen A. Smith talk about this. Hell, I ain't even heard Kwame Brown talk about it. I haven't heard anybody talk about this man. I have never heard about this man. And the fact that I hear about it from a man of no color, a man of no color is the one that's covering this, this man. And I didn't hear Stephen A. Smith talk about no bus and all of this stuff they disparaged Kwame Brown with. He averaged 13 points a game, was benched most of the time, only made 300 and some grand. Or actually, I don't know if that was per year or all together. And went to work for Wendy's. See, if they show you how you can take a little bit, he took his salary. He took his salary. He may have gotten loans. We don't we don't really know. That's why I would love to hear an interview from this man to see how he took put one foot in front of the other and built his empire. I bet you he don't have his him, his children, any of his offspring. They don't have time to be under the, anybody's YouTube comments. They don't. You know why? They out there helping his they daddy probably run an empire or, you know, pursuing their own dreams. They probably don't even know all this shit going on on YouTube. And they will probably laugh hysterically if they knew it was going on. You know, all you hear is this way. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to be a business owner. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And, and we're talking about folks that don't even want to go in and learn the ins and outs of how stuff works. You want a warehouse, but you ain't never had no warehouse job. You don't know how a warehouse run. You don't know how that stuff work. You want to do certain things, but you have no idea how the ins and outs of it work. You just want to snap your fingers or throw some money at it. And you think that it's just going to materialize. Money does not fix everything. If you have a dark, evil heart, money will just exacerb exacerbate your problems. If you addicted, if you have drug addictions, mental health issues, all of these things, you don't address these things. It is only going to magnify those problems. And I say this all the time, and I've actually heard my, my dad say it. I've heard black men say it. There are some men that just straight up late women too, straight up lazy, procrastinating, lazy, tell you in a minute I ain't going to work at Wendy's I ain't I ain't going to work for no white man well if you did did a little digging the franchise that you going to work for might actually be black owned now what is your gripe I don't want to be smelling like grease so you so let me get this straight you would rather go take penitentiary chances on the corner to try to get off whatever you're going to get off, make a hundred, if you even make a hundred dollars, because you know they got to buy their weed, they buying snacks and chips and stuff all day, and drinks and hanging out all. So the little money that they do make selling dope, so some of them don't even sell the dope no more. They just go and rob folks. And they think this cool. And we, black women pussies submit to this mess. 
But meanwhile, a man like this, a man like Junior Bridgman, there will be some dust bunny somewhere that will find fault. <laughs> oh well, look at how he played the game. <laughs> well, he ain't really did that. I have some type of criticism for this man. Oh, uh, his oh, uh, he married some old black woman. She gonna take him for everything. Blah blah blah. They have some horrible shit to say about this man. You know, they won't cut. They won't cover a man like this. No, no, that's too much. Like right. If I show you success, show you someone that's successful. I'm showing you a black man providing for his black children and black wife committed to the black community I haven't heard nobody Al Sharpton nobody ever referenced this man I have never ever heard of this man ever oh he a sellout I thought that because I first thing when I was googling I said and I hate to say this I was like what if his wife might be white I looked no, black wife, college sweetheart. He married his, I'm sorry, high school sweetheart. You know, make up every excuse in the book. And trust me, I can do women too. Trust me, I can I can do women too. Plenty of successful women to pick from. Plenty of, plenty of, plenty of folks to, to pick from to, to uh, show you what success looks like. Right? You go into some project somewhere and you tell that woman to to put that phone down and come study a book. I, I ain't my attention span. I can't just be sitting around studying. I just, uh, what about them? You know, when you live in day to day, I give you this. When you live in day to day in survival mode, it is hard to sit down and concentrate. It is. But you have to force yourself because people do it. I know. I did. When they was running around roaming the streets, I had already gotten in trouble and was on, on punishment for a whole summer. I was like, uh-uh, not this summer. I took my behind to the library. Yes. Got a few of my homegirls to come with me. Guess what? All the homegirls that was chilling with me in the library, oh, baby, we got beautiful families. Money stacked up, businesses, beautiful husbands, beautiful children, enjoying your life. All of the young ladies that did not want to come with us, chasing boys, walking up and down the street, hanging out. They have multiple kids, multiple baby daddies. They don't own shit, don't have shit. And I watch them every day on Facebook. Talk about stupid shit. Still stuck. Years and years later, still stuck. Jump up under your your pictures of you enjoying your life and, and having fun. Must be nice. I showed off some, uh, some workout progress. Clearly, <laughs> with weights and everything in the background. Childhood friend jump up under my thing. Where you go get your surgery done at? I said, is she sneak? Is she sneak dissing me? You know you see this gym in the background, girl. I said she got the. I, I just left her shit like I ain't even see it. I almost blocked her, but I was just like, I'm gonna let her just see all my progress. And I didn't even really. I always, you know, I always had some backside. I'm pretty much working out to keep my backside in control. That's why I'm working out. Honey, I don't even want them to give me a shot. Okay? Let alone somebody cutting me open or sticking needles and sucking fat. Oh, honey. If I just I'm a, if I'm gonna be fat, I'm gonna just be fat. Work out, eat right, walk. Honey, I I I can't even stand the sight of blood. So how I'm gonna wake up and be nursing my wounds and falling out at the same time. I be passing out and trying to patch myself up. Be uh-uh, hell no. And then you put death on the table for something. Oh, that's all. You crazy. You crazy.
Mm-mm. Never. Never. You talking to somebody got all their wisdom teeth. No, no, no. But anyway, I didn't got off topic. It, it goes both ways, right? The men that's out here handling business, they don't have no time to jump up under no comments. They really don't. They don't probably even know all this stuff go on on YouTube. They don't even probably know that they the subjects of some of this stuff that go on on YouTube. You know why? Because they so busy handling their business. They out there actually building the community. You know, I'm going to do one on pastors. That's about to have some religious and non-religious but uh, folks butt hurt but i gotta gather the pictures and the information so stay tuned like share subscribe dislike comment below and thank you for listening